Good evening, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for February 8, 2024. Please remember to leave a comment, like, and a share. And in the news this evening, JLP's Dean Jones offers no comment on gun incident as he is nominated. Jamaica Labour Party Council candidate Dean Jones ignored the questions from the media after he was nominated to contest the upcoming local government election. No media talk, Jones insisted, as James Robertson, Member of Parliament for St. Thomas Western, attempted to arrange an interview with the news. Minutes before that, Jones said nothing as he walked past the reporters who attempted to pose questions to him as he left the nomination center at Yalas Primary School. He was nominated as the GLP's candidate for the Trinityville Division in the upcoming local government election, set for February 26. Jones made national headlines after he was seen in a viral social media video pulling what appears to be a gun on another man during an altercation. The council candidate has insisted that he was acting in self-defense while relatives of the other man claim Jones was the aggressor. The full slate of the JLP candidates in St. Thomas Western was nominated without incident. They are John Lee, Yalas Division, Sheru Stevens, Seaforth Division, Davian McKenzie, White Horses Division, Louis Chin, Cedar Valley, and Andrew Patience, Landui Division. Two cops are charged over shooting outside a fast food restaurant in Ocherios. The police have laid the charges against the two of the three cops who are in custody in connection with the shooting death of a man outside a fast food restaurant in Otoria St. Anne earlier this month. They have been charged with misprison of felony, police sources confirmed. Misprison of felony is a failure to report a crime. A similar charge will also be laid against the third cop and the five civilians who were also arrested in connection with the incident, police sources told the news on Thursday. It is reported that the policemen will also face a charge of misconduct in a public office. When contacted, Donovan Collins, the attorney for two of the policemen and the two of the civilians, declined to comment on reports that his clients have been charged. However, Collins complained about what he claimed was the disregard shown to the court by the St. Anne police. A parish judge in Trelawney, where the cops are being held, Last Thursday ordered that the St. Anne police should release two of the policemen by 4 p.m. by that Friday if no charges were filed against them, Collins said. Why did the St. Anne police believe it was okay to disobey an order of the court, he questioned. Was it necessary to take over 230 hours to determine that the men will be charged for misprison of felony, Collins questioned, making reference to the offenses. Superintendent Dwight Powell, commanding officer for the St. Anne Police, said he had no comment when asked to respond to the claims by the attorney. The man was shot during an altercation outside a popular restaurant in Utrios about 3.30 a.m. two Saturdays ago. He later died at a hospital. Murder accused Julian Silvero remanded until April 11. Former People's National Party Member of Parliament Julian Silvero, who is accused of killing his wife, was a further remanded Thursday when he appeared before the Home Circuit Court. Thursday's proceedings were again held in camera. I think it's important for persons to recognize that based on the offenses for which Mr. Silvero is charged, they would fall within the band where there is an in-camera hearing and we have to abide by that ruling, we have to comply with the law said his attorney, Peter Champagne KC. Mr. Silvera's bail hearing was set for April 11, when his attorneys will try to convince the judge to release him on bond. I think it's important for persons to recognize that based on the offenses for which Mr. Silvera is charged, they would fall within the band where there is an in-camera hearing, and we have to abide by that um, ruling. We have to comply with the law. So all that I can say at this point in time, Ms. Riley and I, all that we can say is that the matter is fixed for bail application on the 11th of April. On that date, uh, the court will hear submissions from us as to why it is that Mr. Silver is a good and fit candidate for bail. The facts of the case are yet to be determined. I have firm instructions and my client is indicating that he's innocent. 
Mr. Silvera was charged last month following an investigation into the death of his wife Melissa at her Stony Hill home in St. Andrew on November 10. It was initially reported that Mrs. Silvera died in her sleep, but a post-mortem later revealed the presence of bullet fragments in her body, prompting a murder investigation. PNP's Reed fights ill health to get on ballot. After being hospitalized for over a week, Oliver Reed, the People's National Party Councillor caretaker for the Little London Division, made a grand entrance at the nomination center in Grinch Hill. According to Vice President of the People's National Party and a member of Parliament a candidate for Westmoreland Western Ian Hills, Reed is fit to run after being diagnosed with dehydration. Reed will be running against his former friend and a now combatant, Ian Miles, who won on a PNP ticket in the 2016 local government election but has switched allegiance to the Jamaica Labour Party. Reid told the news that he is overwhelmed with the support he has received as a first-timer. CMU fraud accused the Kim Brown Lawrence defends a stewardship amid Brownstone division nomination. The Jamaica Labour Party's Kim Brown Lawrence, who remains embroiled in the fraud case at the Caribbean Maritime University, today defended her stewardship after being nominated for the Brownstone division. Brown Lawrence dismissed her critics. Have I been charged? She responded defiantly when questioned by reporters. Brown Lawrence, who is the sitting councillor, was charged in the corruption scandal that rocked the CMU in 2019. Former Education Minister Ruel Reed, his wife Sharon, their daughter Sherelle, as well as a former CMU president, Professor Fritz Pinnock, were also implicated. The five accused were arrested by law enforcement agencies in 2019 in connection with a major fraud and corruption probe by the Financial Investigations Division involving transactions at the CMU. It is being alleged that nearly $50 million was diverted from the university. The charges included breaches of the Corruption Prevention Act, conspiracy to defraud, misconduct in a public office at a common law, and the breaches of the Proceeds of Crime Act. The long-standing case is currently stalled in the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court. Government continues to lobby U.S. to stem inflow of illegal guns. The Andrew Holness-led administration continues to lobby for the United States to provide a greater assistance in stemming the flow of illegal guns into the island. Addressing a security seminar at the AC Marriott Hotel on Wednesday, the Prime Minister said altering the influx of illegal guns in the country would help to bolster the measures the government has implemented to secure the country's points of entry and to bring the crime problem under control. We recognize that there are still many gaps. One of them is the ability of the state to control the inflow of illegal guns into Jamaica. It is a problem for us to control our borders, he said. According to a news release on Thursday, Holness indicated that massive investments have been made in boosting the capabilities of the security forces to increase surveillance and detect illicit items at the ports of entry. This includes investments in offshore patrol vessels and the maritime patrol aircraft and the boosting scanning capabilities at the ports. But as an island, you know that we have several informal points of entry and it's going to be difficult to control all of them, but we are increasing our surveillance, including making significant investment in a state-of-the-art coastal radar system, he said. We aren't doing what is necessary, but we could do with some help from our friends from the United States because what we are seeing is a change in the profile of weapons coming into Jamaica. Maybe 10 or 15 years ago, Jamaica would be getting what we would describe as a post-war weapons out of Latin America, post-war conflict weapons out of Nicaragua and El Salvador and other places. Now what we are seeing are AR-15 and the Glock platforms, which are mostly coming out of North America, Holness continued, even as he reiterated that the country's gun control problem is not America's prerogative. This is not America's problem. Let me be clear, this is Jamaica's problem. Jamaica must take responsibility and not leave our national security up to our partners. We must take responsibility for it. The truth is, it is not Americans, meaning persons without Jamaican connections, that are sending guns here. It is our relatives, our family members, he noted, 
adding that he has asked the American government to look seriously into this matter. When I visited, I spoke to Vice President Kamala Harris a couple of years ago. I went back two years ago, myself and the Commissioner. We met with representatives of the Department of Justice, and I went back last year again. We have been constantly lobbying, and our partners have been very accommodating to us, he said. I must say that our partners have been giving us a listening ear, and I know you know our American partners have so many other challenges that they have to deal with little Jamaica's problem. You know, we really should be dealing with that, but because of where our capacity is versus the magnitude of the problem, we need the support. Meanwhile, Coordinator for the Caribbean Firearms and Prosecutions and Associate Deputy Attorney General, United States Department of Justice, Michael Benary said the guns that are being illegally trafficked from the United States is a shared problem. We are committed to standing shoulder to shoulder with you in investigating, prosecuting, charging and taking these networks out of commission. It is a problem that we view as our problem, as well as a problem here with our very close partners in Jamaica, he noted.